My hands are filthy this morning because I have been fixing pens, though they're pretty filthy almost all of the time. Uh, one of the things that I enjoy doing is matching up a nib in the correct pen. And it's not just matching up a Waterman number two in a Waterman number two body. It's not just matching up a Waterman number two nib made in 1910 with a pen from 1910 either. I, what, I, what I'm talking about is matching up the exact nib style with what the pen, how the pen will be used and what the pen might look like. And I'm the only one, I think, in the world that does this. Maybe there's others. If you are one of the type that do this, let me know and tell me in comments below why you do it. Um, but I recently, I bought this pen on eBay, it came yesterday, I put a sack in it this morning, and it has a very nice fine nib in it, beautiful nib, very springy, very fine, and it's really a sweet nib, but it doesn't belong in this pen. This nib. This is a wall, I'm sorry, a maybe Todd pen, swan pen. It has a broad, sort of noisy, fat nib, at least in comparison with this, this one. And this one seems to fit the short, well, you know, proportionally fatter pen. And I really like that idea. I often will put a stub nib or a broad nib in a shorter pen, or at least a, yes, a shorter pen. Sometimes I, I, they end up in larger pens because they have to, uh, depending on, you know, if it's a dual fold senior nib, I'm not going to be able to cram that into a lady dual fold, obviously, but uh, when I have the opportunity to put a nib like this into a pen like this, I really like it. It really works well. Now, this pen nib, which is an absolutely magnificent nib, I think would feel more comfortable in a pen that's longer. This is a Swan pen that is quite long as you can see and I have a Waterman nib in it by it just made its way into this pen at one point um, and it stayed there though I can probably find a swan nib that will fit it equally well um, but because of the length the balance is different and it makes me it makes using a fine nib more pleasurable to me. I'll explain that. I mean, this is physics. Let's see if I explain it correctly. Here is our fulcrum. Here is the surface of the paper, and the pen is going like this. The pen nib is going to be down here like that. Right? Got that? So, let's get another piece of paper. And explain this. So, surface of the paper, fulcrum. In order to create really, really fine lines, you almost have to lift the pen off the paper. You just have it barely skimming the surface of the paper. So, if all of the weight, if this is the fulcrum, If all of the weight, or much of the weight, is in front of that fulcrum, on this side of the fulcrum where the nib is, you sort of don't have that play that you want. You, it sort of wants to press down more. Gravity is pushing down more. When the pen has a 
better balance if I let this go. It's almost going to fall backwards. I mean, clearly it will fall backwards. And but yet there's more pen this way, but there's there's a force on the back of the pen that's helping lift the pen off the page. And a nib that's very, very delicate and very, very fine, like this one, works really well in this kind of a barrel because of that pressure that's pushing down on the back of the pen and lifting up on the front of the pen. Now it's Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy on the, on the teeter-totter. You know, Oliver sits down and Stan goes flying off into, you know, the Paramount picture back lot, even though they're at RKO. You know, he'll just shoot off into the stratosphere, almost getting escape velocity because of that. So that's sort of what we're having here. I like to have fine nibbed pens be balanced in such a way so that the nib can barely touch the paper. This pen, you know, I let it go and it wants to fall forward. Here, there's more weight coming down. Yes, I know. I know. I know. It's not a lot of weight. It's very light. It's not like we're moving tonnages of bricks and granite on the back of a trailer. We're not doing that, but the, the idea is the same. Here, all of the weight is forward, and it makes me want to press down more. Uh, for me to lift up on the pen, it actually requires more work on my part, uh, more consciousness, conscious work. Um, here, using this pen again as an example, the it's it's easier. It feels like it's easier. There, there's less struggle on my part to keep the pen sort of gently kissing the paper. So I'm sure that all of you, I mean, when you go to a, a modern pen store today, one of the selling points that they say is, oh, feel the balance in your hand. Yeah. What the hell does that mean? They have no clue. Yes, you can feel a balance. It's going to be balanced or unbalanced or heavy or not heavy. And sometimes, now that you know my little secrets here, sometimes there's a reason that you want to have the balance be point heavy versus tail heavy. There's also some people that will never post a pen. I think that there's some deep-seated mental problems with people like that, but I don't know what that is. I'm not a psychologist, so I can't tell you what the problem that is, but some people just hate it, and I suspect it might be either they don't like it to be balanced, they like to have the security of all of the weight being forward, or they don't like that difference, that subtle difference between the cap and the barrel um, to interfere with their writing because it often will hit right here. I'm sorry, right here. And when you have a pen that's much thicker, where the cap is much thicker, let me find one there. Is this much thicker? Oh, that's thick enough that this this difference, you know, sort of hitting here, and it, it could bother someone. So you take it off and you don't have that. That would be a reason to not want to post a pen. But honestly, I don't know what other reason there would be. Unless, let's say you had this pen had a stub nib in it, and I wanted to press down more, I might do that. I might unpost the pen to have that extra 
weight be more forward than balanced. So I know that there's so many ways that you can love writing with these things. You can just be mesmerized by the beauty of their construction or the pretty design or the brightly colored plastic and you can sit there and ooh and ah about all these visual things that they offer you. You can ooh and ah at the line that it makes. But the other the other senses or the other ways to appreciate pens, you know, there's yes, there's the smell of a pen. There are pens that are made of hard rubber that clearly have an odor to them that some people enjoy, some people find unpleasant. Um, there's the tactile feel of metal versus hard rubber versus plastic versus leather. If you were lucky enough to have a Chilton pen that has snakeskin or ostrich or leather uh, on it, not leather, reptile skin, little scales. I guess they made one with leather. That's really a, a interesting feeling as well. There's so many ways to appreciate a pen that is beyond looking at it. And the balance of the pen in your hand, how it, yes, every Every pen that's in your hand has a balance to it, unless you're in space, in which case you're out of luck. But gravity and its continual pull toward the Earth of on, on any object, including this little tiny pen, is going to provide you with information, feedback, or an experience, some sort of experience you're going to have with this pen based on how it fits in your hand and how the balance works. And sort of pay attention to that. If you, if you haven't paid attention to it, do it right now. Get two pens that are very different from one, one another. If you have two pens that have very similar nibs to them, so what kind of nib does this one have? That's a sweet nib. I haven't used this pen in probably a decade. Look at that thing. Wall number two. Pretty sweet. But writing with, even if they had identical nibs, this one, this nib is not identical to that one, there's going to be a difference in how you, how the pen writes on the page how the nib greets the page, how the nib and the pen feel on the page and um, feel in your hand and the line that it makes is dependent on things like weight of the pen. Now this is very much, this is very forward. It's sort of like I had a, my favorite bicycle was it is still a Raleigh tourist, the kind that have that you still see in Europe. Everyone in Europe seems to ride these black bicycles, and you know the, the handlebars. That's that part. That's what that's called. The handlebars. They sort of from the top view. They go out like this. And, you know, I, when, I, when I ride a bicycle that has short handlebars and my hands are, my arms are closer together, yes, I might go faster because my silhouette is, is narrower, but I don't feel like I have the balance. I always feel like I'm going to be tip, tipping sideways. When I ride a bicycle that has a fork that is more vertical than this way, I also feel like I'm gonna go forward. I absolutely 
hate that kind of a bicycle. I really like the seeing the front and the you know the front tire you know way off in the distance in front of me and I love that balance and um, you will find you know the, the same sort of rules and laws apply to riding these two different kinds of bicycles as holding these two different pens even if they were identical nibs uh, it's a very different experience and I want you to take two pens that are as similar as you can make them, except have different lengths, and try them out. See if you feel the same thing that I feel. And um, if you do, I can let you know who my therapist is that does a great job with me, and you can maybe... Uh, improve your pathetic life as much as I know I don't mean to say that you I think I think people that don't use pens and don't think about these things um, are missing out on a huge uh, experience you know is it as different as eating mashed potatoes with lumps in it as opposed to mashed potatoes that come out of a box that you add water is it you know, what are what are the differences i don't know exactly but there are differences and it's really really fun to explore them to analyze them to try to figure them out because um the next time you pick up this pen write with it you might say gee this is great it's even greater than I remembered because you're now thinking about one other aspect of the pen in your hand um, or you might say gee this is the wrong nib which I'm gonna I'm gonna find a stub nib to put in this short pen very soon uh, I'll end with this. I'll show both of these pens, both of them, both of them together. Um, they're just engraved differently. I once brought a pen that was unengraved. I was it was going to be given to someone that helped make this building that I live in happen, and um, I had a pen that didn't have a name in it, and I said. I brought it to a jeweler and I said, can you please write the name, write the inscription? And uh, the jeweler did it and, it and I showed it to George Salustro at the Bromfield Pen Shop. And he told me that they did it upside down. Because you're supposed to, when you're holding the pen like this in your right hand, you're supposed to be able to rotate it or do whatever you want to do and see the inscription. Here, this one is Jew Jr. J E W Jr. Are there periods there? No, it just says Jew Jr. No periods. This one says C M. But this one you read it this way. So, in George Salustro's universe, this person would have been left-handed because you hold it in your left hand and you read it correctly. Here you have to hold this in your right hand to read it cor correctly. And the times when you don't have that is when the cap, when the actual cap is engraved, um, which, let's see, this one is engraved J. So this one whether you hold it in your hand capped, I guess you'd hold it like this cap. So the cap, regardless of whether it's, I guess if I'm left-handed, sorry, if I'm left-handed, it would be upside down. So the same, that same problem would happen. Um, engravings, evidently, according to George Salustro, 
have a direction. And it makes perfect sense. I'll just end with this, speaking of length. Swan levers are always really long, almost always, much longer than you'd think they'd need to be. You know, you think of the, the pin in a lever to be in the middle. Well, if this were in the middle, you'd lift this up and it would st almost stick out the bottom. But here they have the pin very much forward. But it's just interesting. The, the levers always seem long. Whereas, oops, yeah, that's, a, that's another swan lever. Not as long. Wall levers are always sort of short. Well, on these metal pens anyway. They look wrong. They look okay on this size, they look sort of wrong on this size. They just look tiny. 20 minutes you've been listening to me instead of doing other things. You must be crazy. Again, let me know. I'll send you my therapist's contact info. Doodaloo.